Uh, when all is said and done, the 2020 election will have lasted 1,258 days. That's 1,258 days of being told that this is the most important election of our lifetimes and that only the Democrats can save us from Donald Trump. Millions of us were asked to choose between two parties of imperialism, capitalism, and racism. Millions chose to support Biden, not because they love Biden, honestly, who could love Biden, but because they hated Trump. And so now it's a waiting game until Trump is out of office. And I'm not sad to see him go. Trump is a racist, imperialist, war criminal who has brought nothing but attacks on the working class and the most oppressed. But we should be very clear. This election is not a victory for the working class and the oppressed. The Bidenist sector rule is the picture of a neoliberal, complete with mass deportations, austerity, more defensive killer cops, and war on the global south. This is the tragedy of the bipartisan system. As the healthcare system falls apart, millions are unemployed, a housing crisis threatens to explode, and student debt is reaching unheard of levels the working class was presented with Trump and Biden, two men who have solutions to none of these issues. And so many supported the Democrats in the hopes that they will bring about much needed reforms. But all of these candidates, no matter how left they may appear, are going to be complicit in the coming attacks on the working class and oppressed under a Biden administration, because that's what Democrats do. We need a party of our own because we can't keep supporting our class enemies in hopes that this time things will turn out differently. But it's not just the Democrats and the Republicans, it's the entire system of so-called American democracy. If you watch cable news, you'll see most of the mainstream media and the entire Democratic Party calling this election a win for democracy. They want us to believe that they are brave knights in shining armor to face down Trump, the would-be dictator, who's trying to subvert every norm of American democracy, but the hallowed institutions set up for us by the founding fathers held strong. Except we all know that that's not happening. This election is the perfect example of how American democracy is a joke. I mean, we all waited days, learned the internal geography of states we've never been to, and wondered if a couple thousand voters in Pennsylvania would ensure that the candidate who got several million more votes would win. The American system is completely undemocratic, even by the standards of capitalist democracy. It has the electoral college, which means that the popular vote has very little to do with who wins the election. It has the Senate that gives smaller, usually white states, a disproportionate amount of power. It has, the, it has widespread voter suppression with millions of young people, immigrants, and, for, and the formerly incarcerated not being allowed to vote. This election doesn't show the strength of American democracy, but it's many, many failings. Going forward, we must fight not only Biden, but the entire system of capitalist democracy, which isn't democratic at all. Also, let's be clear. Trump may be gone, but Trumpism wasn't defeated. Trump got more votes than he did last time, and several Trump Republicans were elected to Congress, such as Madison Cawthorn, the Hitler stand in North Carolina, or Marjorie Taylor Greene, the QAnon supporter and anti-masker in Georgia. What this election made clear is that Trumpism and the right-wing populism represents is here to stay, because you don't beat the organized right-wing with elections, and you certainly can't beat the right-wing with the same neoliberalism that created Trump to begin with. You beat the organized right-wing with an organized left-wing and with class struggle. We beat them by fighting in our workplaces and on the streets. We beat them by organizing in a united front with a broad sector of the working class and oppressed, but without the capitalists. Because all capitalists do is use us to get power and then stab us in the back. History is littered with examples. And Biden will be more of the same because Biden is not the lesser evil. I think that needs to be said again. Biden is not the lesser evil. He's the more polite evil. Sure, as president, he probably won't tweet out unhinged things and be so bold-faced about his corruption and racism. And sure, he probably won't explicitly dog whistle a white supremacist. But he will still implement racist and white supremacist policy. And this isn't me speculating. He said it. He even said that it was Trump who wants to defund the police, not him. Biden is a cop supporter through and through, which means that he is perfectly fine with the racist war cops wage on communities of color. He's not only fine with, but he actually created the current mass incarceration epidemic when he wrote the crime bill in the 1990s. On international issues, Biden might be even more of a war hawk than Trump is. He ran a platform being tougher on China, completely supported Israel, and whipped votes for the war in Iraq. Just in the past few days, Biden brought on Celia Munez, who helped orchestrate the record-setting deportations under Obama onto his transition team. He's the former vice deporter in chief, and he's gearing up to do it all over again. So Joe Biden, who promised his billionaire and millionaire donors that nothing would fundamentally change, and who was elected to bring back capital stability, is a warrior for this capitalist system. His transition team is full of CEOs. Does anyone really think that he's going to pop off with anything resembling good policy for the working class? 
and as president, he almost certainly will move to the right in order to build bridges with the Republican Party. Even during the campaign, Biden went to the right. Who can forget his and Kamala Harris's passionate defense of fracking, or his constant opposition to Medicare for All and the Green New Deal? For the global South, the working class, the oppressed, and the planet, Biden is no lesser evil. I think for me, what this election really crystallized was the utter failure of the strategy of pushing the Democratic Party to the left. In 2016, I was a big Bernie Sanders fan. I really believed that he was going to change things. But this year it became very clear to me what Sanders represented when he totally fell behind Biden and uncritically supported him. Sanders turned out to be exactly what the Democratic Party needed because he helped them over the past four years rebuild and rebrand the party. He brought new people in and stopped others from splitting and helped create the illusion that the Democrats were a viable left-wing alternative. And despite his efforts, the Biden administration is already marginalizing Sanders and the progressives. But that's all that is an illusion because the Democratic Party can't ever be a left-wing party because it's owned and operated by and for the wealthy. That's the central conceit of the Democrats. They allow the capitalists to don a better costume, appeal to social movements, weaponize their power to get elected, and then unceremoniously kill them in the night. Look at recent history. Obama got elected on the back of the anti-war movement, but then, as president, not only didn't end the war, but escalated it with drone strikes while the anti-war movement fizzled away, and nothing changed. Look at the Women's March. They got a million people onto the streets to oppose Trump, but then pushed their power to the polls and campaigned to elect another president accused of sexual assault. There weren't even mass demonstrations against Amy Coney Barrett, whose confirmation represented a potentially deadly attack on reproductive rights. Instead, all they said was, vote Biden. Just look at the Black Lives Matter movement this summer. Millions of people took the streets in the largest ever social movement in U.S. history to protest racist violence. And then the Democrats and their allies with the unions and the nonprofits managed to con them into voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who took up none of their demands because it was the pragmatic choice against Donald Trump but they were never the true allies of the movement. In fact, basically all of the cities where protesters were repressed this summer were run by Democrats. It was the Democrats who ever saw the beating and gassing of activists. It was the Democrats who were in charge of the police department that killed George Floyd. This is the lesser evil they offer us. Crocodile tears about how we all need to learn and grow and then more of the same racism and violence. This is what Democrats do and ultimately what Sanders did as well. It's the same story time and time again. Progressives and activists bite a bullet and compromise their principles in the name of pragmatism and then elect a Democrat who enacts policies that hurt the very people who got them elected. It keeps happening, but still, every election we are told that we must be pragmatic and vote for a party that has done nothing but steal our slogans and stab us in the back. There is nothing pragmatic about following a bad and losing strategy. We can do better. Going forward, we need to organize ourselves to fight back Biden's attacks on the working class and oppressed, both in the U.S. and around the world. This may sound like a daunting task, and in many ways it is, but we've already seen the beginnings of this. This year, we, this year we saw essential workers organized to fight the pandemic and the capitalist austerity associated with it. We saw a mass movement against state violence in a dock worker strike that shut down all the ports on the West Coast in solidarity. Internationally, we saw huge movements in France, the Middle East, and in Latin America. In Chile, the working class forced the government to call an assembly to rewrite the whole constitution. We run everything. We make their whole economy work. And when we decide to, we can shut it all down. We need to organize to weaponize that power to overthrow the entire capitalist system and end the oppression and exploitation that it represents. We need to build a real political alternative that can take on both the Democrats and the Republicans and not abandon mass politics to instead focus on small local projects. We're locked in a fight against an enemy that is organized internationally. To defeat them, we must also organize ourselves at this level. To quote Malcolm X, we're not outnumbered or outorganized. The working class and the oppressed vastly outnumber the capitalist exploiters. Now we need to organize ourselves to seize our power and take down the whole system. Thank you.